For some children, kindergarten may be their first social experience. Some of these children coming to school for the first time may have never socially interacted with other children or adults. When teaching kindergarten, it is important to keep in mind that you want to have a safe and inclusive classroom for all of your children's needs. I personally have a bin in my classroom with a variety of different tools that I've used in the past for various children. Before children come to school, the kindergarten team at my school likes to meet with the families, usually in the spring before September. We conduct a kindergarten intake survey with the families. The kindergarten intake survey is a great way for a teacher to better understand the student who will be starting school in September. Usually parents will share with the teacher at that meeting if they have any concerns for their child and they may also share with you some things that will allow the child to transition smoothly from home to school. The needs in a kindergarten classroom vary year to year. That being said, it's important to create a structured environment that is predictable for the young children in your class. It's important to also be flexible. Every year, I've had to make some changes to the classroom setting to ensure the safety and success of my students with special needs. I currently have a number of students in my classroom who are identified with autism. Students with autism learn best in an environment that is not only predictable, but also has a series of visual cues. I always have a visual schedule that is posted on my classroom board. Depending on the student's needs, I may also provide that student with their own independent visual schedule that they can use and hold throughout the day. If the visual schedule is still overwhelming for a student, I may provide them with a first and then chart, which really breaks down the visual schedule. So you might tell the student that first, we're going to do carpet time, then we're going to have our play time. Something that I wear during the school day is a lanyard. On my lanyard, I also have a series of visual cards with simple commands. Commands such as stop, look, sit, and listen. These visual cards are great for students who are nonverbal and require a visual cue to be successful in school. Having it on your lanyard makes it very accessible. Social stories are also a great way to help students with special needs transition throughout the day or they can be used to help a student work on a goal that they're working on. A social story is just a very simple story with very simple visuals. For example, many students with autism might use a social story to help them go from kindergarten to grade one. The social story will include their new classroom, their new teacher, and some of the goals that they'll have in their new classroom. As I mentioned earlier, a lot of students come to school and may not be identified with special needs. It's very important that if you have concerns for a child to communicate this with the families. When communicating special needs to a family, it's important to keep in mind the child's strengths and interests before sharing the needs of the student. Having an open dialogue with the family is very important. You want to be able to build a positive report with the family. Some things that I've done in the past that have worked for me is having a communication duotang or folder 
that goes from home to school and from school to home each day. You can ask the families to write in the communication folder how the child's night and morning was. And then you can share with the families different things that had happened during the school day. This is great for students who may be nonverbal and cannot communicate to their grown-ups at the end of the day about what they did at school.